Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back to Celebrating Act 2, where my partner John Cohen and I get to speak with Vanny Pacheco, one of our favorite human beings in the world. And, uh, and a movie buff. And, um, and the master, the movie meister. <laughs> Manny, yeah, that's the, the only uh, way I'm ever going to be buff is to be a movie buff because right. I ain't buff anywhere else. And if we're going to be in the buff, I think we got to do this in a podcast, no, not I'm in a video, buff. not no, in a video log. We, we were <laughs> not designed for video there, log right? buff. Uh, Manny, the National Film Registry hmm. is our, uh, it, you know, run by the Library of Congress, is our what our preservation society, I guess they they. They try to identify the films that are uniquely uh, worth preserving. Aesthetically important, yeah. And it's kind of a Hall of Fame as well. Yeah, yeah. but but it's so different it, in a lot of ways. It's, it's not just a whole bunch of highbrows like you, experts in the field. They actually want to listen to the ordinary folks, the common folk like John and I, not just the experts like Manny. Uh, tell us well, about the film yourself. registry. I'm not that common. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so explain that to us, Manny. What? How do they? How do they determine which films they pick every year to go into the registry? Well, first, let me say they pick 25 every year, and there's a website uh, at 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 uh, at the Library of Congress, the National Film Registry, and and they identify year by year the 25 films that they're going to induct. They're not just feature films. They could be two reelers. They can be documentaries. They can be just a piece of film in a reel of celluloid that they found in a basement somewhere. But all of a sudden, it becomes important for whatever reason that it does. And it captures from the beginnings of film, in other words, back in the 1890s, 1880s, all the way, in this case, this year, to 2012. And you get to, and the audience, this audience listening and, and anybody across the country can go to the site. They can vote for their 50 favorite films that should be inducted for any given year. And let me just tell you, they are savvy enough to provide a list from way back in like 1898 to 2012, a list of films that have not made the registry yet. So wow. they can help you in yeah. finding you know, identifying which films are are, are like the biggest omissions. Right. And so I I could go on to the registry website and pick a film from 1898 if since it's there, I wouldn't know what it was otherwise, right? Right. And I can nominate that to be preserved. Right. And does it even have to be on the list? In other words, if we know of something. No, but the list is so extensive, Art. I, I'm tell you right now, I I think. There is easily six to ten thousand songs, uh, songs, six to ten thousand movies uh, there wow. that to choose from. I mean, it, it is an overwhelming amount. And let me tell you, picking fifty, I could pick three hundred without even drawing. You a mean sweat. that that really quality that are not on the list now? Like, can you give us an there, example of like, some that maybe have just made it that would blow our minds that had never made it or that still aren't on it? Well, one of the films that just made it a year or two ago, which blew my mind, I just never dreamed that that, that film would be off the list, was My Fair Lady. Really? What? Just yeah, my, and My Fair Lady was the, the film that, that did it for George Cukor. He won his Academy Award. Yes, it's based on one of the one of the great plays by Lerner and, and Lowe. Right. Unless, yeah, Lerner and Lowe. And, and it was a magnificent film, you know, and, and except for the controversy of whether or not Audrey Hepburn was singing, that's the only flaw. That's the only flaw there. But it, uh, it, you would you would think that that film would have been on the list for many many years, not just well, recently. Yeah, but it's it's amazing that it didn't. But I mean, you, you go back into the 1930s and some of the films that they left off, Dinner at Eight, which is arguably one of the great films of the 1930s. It followed on the cusp of Grand Hotel, which was the best picture of the year. Features magnificent performances mm -hmm. from from. Uh, um, uh, Marie Dressler, who was at the height of her career before she died suddenly. Uh, Jean Harlow, who was at the height of her career before she died suddenly. Uh, the, the, the Barrymores, Lionel and John Barrymore. Uh, Wallace Berry, and a magnificent performance from Billy Burke. 
<laughs> and as bad as it sounds that Dinner at Eight's not on there, how about Manhattan Melodrama, which for the first time out of 14 times paired William Powell and Myrna Loy. Their wow. next film was going to be The Thin Man. Clark Gable's oh, wow. Along for the Ride. Wow. Great MGM. Historical piece that kind of chronicles the rise of John Dillinger in a fictional way. Yeah. And my favorite 1930s pick that's omitted, and I vote every year for it, hoping it'll make it someday, is Captain's Courageous. The Spencer Tracy mm -hmm. uh, award-winning film that was written it's by so Roger Kipling. Oh, I can't believe that's not been nominated. So, yeah, it's it's amazing that Captain's Courageous is so not Manny, any, well, any one of us can go on. As a matter of fact, we'll put into, that, in, into the description down below uh, a link uh, because... Right. Uh, I think it's near the end of the year, or the beginning of a new year, when they they they're open to Make their announcements, suggestions. But so, are there any that uh, uh, you you're anticipating this year uh, that you're going well, uh, to uh, go, go after? I eternal. I always root, root for the ones I think should. You can look. Look, all they need to do is to look at 1939, right? Great year. Right. What would be off the list? I mean, obviously, you're going to have Gone with the Wind on there. Wizard of Oz is there. You know, Mr. Smith goes to Washington. But what about Goodbye, Mr. Chips? Robert Donay wins an Academy Award for Best Actor. Left right. off. The Wait, Hounds still not on? Yeah, The Hounds of the Baskervilles started the entire Sherlock Holmes series. Yeah. How does that not make it on? That's That's a pioneering start to a great series of films. And the biggest omission of 1939... Of mice and men, oh, really wow. chronicled what the Great Depression was all about, and yeah. written by John Steinbeck. How does that not make it in? Yeah. <laughs> so you're really, saying that there may be 50 films from 1939 alone? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right, Art. All but right. Well, I've got to go vote. I've got. Oh, to. absolutely. Let me give you some other examples, real quickly. Arsenic and Old Lace from 1943. Gary Green. Uh, you've got The Wolfman from 1941, one of the most iconic Universal horror films yeah. of all time. Yeah. The uh, the last film ever made by Clark Gable and Marilyn Monroe, The Misfits. The last film ever made by Humphrey Bogart, The Harder They Fall. Um, and the one that most Hollywood historians turn to. I've talked to other members of my, uh, my my colleagues, and they all point to the Robert Youngson films, the golden age of comedy, and when comedy was king. These yeah. were films that brought silent movies to a whole new generation of viewers. In one case, uh, The Battle of the Century, which is a, a little snippet of a Laurel and Hardy film that was considered lost, but it stayed relevant because it was in the golden age of comedy, they pieced the film together with some lost footage. They actually got the film made, I think, 90% with a couple of stills in between, but now it's not lost anymore. And instantly, that was one of the winners that went into the film registry wow. upon its re-release from being lost. So yeah. if that piece should go in, how about the, 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 the film that kept that piece alive, The Golden Age of Comedy? It belongs in the Library of Congress yeah. National Film. Now, the yeah, Golden that's... Age of Comedy was a Yunkin documentary, that's, really, yeah. about... Yeah, that's about right. So, yeah. so yeah, it, Manny, help great. us with this a little bit. Um, this is basically not for, for, for currently released films, but this is they have to be at least 20 or 30 years old, something like that. 10 years. Only 10 years old. Wow. Only 10 years old. The, the, the most modern film I always vote for, because 1994 is such an important film a year for me, because, you know, Shawshank, right. Ed Wood, uh, you, you got uh, Forrest Gump, and you got Pulp Fiction. All are in the registry. But for my money, Quiz Show. Talked about mm -hmm. the films. It talked about the game show scandals. Sure. Uh, it, it is chronically, chronicled absolutely accurately. Great performances, particularly from yeah. Ray Fiennes and John Turturro, directed by Robert Redford. I always vote for Quiz Show. I think it's a magnificent movie. And oh, by the way, in support, Paul Schofield, who's always good. So, so basic, basically, uh, the celebrating Act Two audience can help make a difference here. Okay, because yes, you're 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 like you're like our our uh, safari guide of <laughs> things forgotten that are more like Hollywood crews, but yeah, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we would have him play you, okay? In the movie, yeah. he, he he 
we'll, we'll you ask him if he wants to play Manny Pacheco. But uh, <laughs> uh, so celebrating Act Two then, because we are the voters. It's not some kind of only elites are allowed to go there, Hollywood elites. So just us ordinary palookas can go in and vote. So the we can make a can difference. Vote. Celebrating Act Two audience, audience can make a difference. Can vote. Yes. Absolutely. And, you know, I'm glad that you gave me the opportunity at least to make this to make folks aware of of the, the film registry. It's not talked about as much, but I can tell you on my blog at ForgottenHollywood.com, every year I do a blog on some of the films that made it for that particular year. And I've been doing that since 2011. That is a go to blog for me once a year. I want to make sure that folks know what's going into the registry, what's part of the Film Hall of Fame, shall we say. And um, and then I try to also make a point as to films that are still not in. And that just, it boggles my mind. I mean, I, I, if I mention names like Elmer Gantry, The Great Escape, The Pride of the Wait, Yankees, no, they're not in? Them. The Great Escape is that Elmer Gantry? Love is like no, the no. morning and the evening wow. star. Right. Wow. Right. How about The Longest Day, The Birdman of Alcatraz, The Miracle Worker? Not in? Great films. Not in. Wow. Well, they got to get me, people me, to vote finish, for them. Let me finish with one more. Sure. Can, can I do one more? And this is going to just shock you. Okay. Why is The Defiant Ones not in? The Defiant Ones really looked at race in the 1950s when it needed to. It paired impeccable performances from Tony Curtis and Sidney Poitier at the start of his career, both nominated for Academy Awards. It solidified Stanley Kramer's credentials as a social filmmaker. To me, The Defiant Ones is another one of those films that I'm like, wow, how is that not in? It is it is aesthetically important and belongs in the library of Congress. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna I'd love to talk more, Manny, but I gotta go vote. <laughs> Good. I like both all 50. Don't leave any off the, you know, give it a full. I 50. promise. Hey, and, John, and John, in our audience, not only can we vote, but we can have our spouses and our children right. and our grandchildren. And some of us are great grandchildren because you don't have to be 18 to vote. You just have to be Internet savvy. And who's more Internet savvy than our grandchildren? And as, as a they say to me, in Chicago, vote early and vote often. <laughs> and as a favor to me, Throw in It's a Mad, 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 Mad World. That'll just warm my heart. That's still not okay. in? Okay. Still not in. <laughs> okay. Well, now, and, and in all fairness to me, in all fairness to me, I need to give you one more parting shot. There are probably very few Roger Corman films that have made it either. Oh! <laughs> no, but Pink Flamingo's in. It, it got in last year, and of course, that makes John Waters very happy, and I, I don't get it, but you know, there are people who love those midnight movies, and maybe we need a representative, and that was the one. Cool. Well, thank you, Manny. <laughs> this is, this was a, a little-known uh, opportunity that most of us just were unaware of. So without Manny Pacheco, we still wouldn't know about it. Thank you, Manny. As John says, go vote. Yes. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.